Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be focusing on creating the ultimate engineered solar system with the most possible number of Earths in the um, habitable zone using mathematics, science and the more recent article from University of Toronto that I discussed in the previous video. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So, uh, just as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, uh, this new simulation was added to Universe Sandbox based on a study. Uh, you can actually read about it by just refreshing the actual simulation. Uh, a study and an analysis by astronomer Sean Raymond. Uh, his blog is actually posted here. And what he did was add seven layers of 52 planets, uh, Earth-like planets, um, in, in this particular arrangement. Now, what is interesting about this, and this is actually why I decided to make this video, is that this is not an optimal uh, configuration. There's a paper that I mentioned in the previous video where I talked about placing as many Earths in a single orbit as possible, that you can place up to 73 or even 74 Earths, because this will allow them to have a distance of 8.5 hill spheres, which is about 0.085 astronomical units, which is about, you know, 8.5% of a distance from Sun to Earth. Now, it's important to understand that this particular arrangement is um, stable up to about 1 billion years, or maybe even several billion years, but the chance decreases dramatically as the time passes. But if you are okay with creating a system that's going to be stable for a billion years, this is what we're going to do in this video. Now, it's going to get super slow, though. I'm, I'm kind of basically warning you in advance, because my computer is not going to be able to handle so many planets easily. Now, the cool thing about this particular um, simulation that they've created here is that it's, surpri it's surprisingly fast. I don't know how they did it. Uh, and it's also, if you look at it, it's not perfect for many reasons. One of them is that their planets are actually not Earth-like. They're only half Earth in terms of mass. We are going to be creating a perfect uh, simulation here. In one of the previous videos, once again, I actually created and also saved uh, a system of 517 Earth-like objects. These are called moons, but they're actually Earth-like. And interestingly, if you look at their arrangement, they all fit perfectly well, more or less, I guess, into the uh, what's known as a conservative habitable zone. So distance, the maximum distance is about 1.68 I think 68 astronomical units and the minimal distance is 0.99 astronomical units. There's 517 planets here. This is already way more than um, Sean Raymond or really anyone else placed in here. And this would be stable for about a billion years. But here is a thing. So this is where it gets slightly more interesting. Just like I did in the previous video and, and the paper I mentioned in one of the previous video, videos, that is, um, there is another area right in between these orbits where you can place more planets as long as they're moving in the opposite direction. So right now everything here is moving counterclockwise, I believe. Yeah, counterclockwise. If I place more right between them moving uh, clockwise, I can actually have one, two, three, four, five, six more layers of 74 planets. That's really crazy. And I'm go I haven't really been successful just yet because I discovered that it's very difficult to do this automatically and manually placing what seems to be a 444 planets would be just hell. Like it would take me probably the entire day and I would probably crash my game in the between and then would have to start over. I honestly, this is my third time making this video and I, trust me, I tried. Things happened, I got really mad because the game did kind of unfortunately crash. Um, and also, I just didn't do it perfectly. And then I tried to do a few things here and there. I tried to add the um, planets one way or another just by adding rings. It was super hard. It's surprisingly hard. And then I actually finally magically found a solution. Today you're going to discover the solution. I'm going to show it to you. Um, and we're going to do this step by step together. So if you've created this already using previous video, you can uh, follow along. But basically, this is what we're going to do. And hopefully this works. I'm doing this a uh, second time. First time I did it with, without recording and it worked. So let's hope it works again. This is going to be 
Uh, not super realistic and not super accurate, but we'll do our best. Okay, so first of all, we need to reverse row velocities. And look at that, everything is now moving clockwise. I'll, I'll explain in a few seconds why, but this is the step number one. Now I'm going to actually pause my game because otherwise things will just not work. Uh, more so just for the sakes of my computer, remove labels and trails because this way the game will actually be a lot faster and you get more frames per second. And now we're going to be uh, changing our sun a little bit. We're going to change our sun to be the mass of 74 Earths because we're going to be adding 1 74th of this uh, around the sun. Uh, I'll explain in a second. You'll see why I'm doing this. And here is the tricky part. This is actually, took, it took me like hours, if not days, to figure it out. You can also now change the gravity of the system. And if you increase the gravity, making it so that the at distance of one astronomical unit, you still get about one sun worth of gravity, you can then place more objects automatically without doing anything else. And this is where, it, it, this was like the, Eureka moment for me. So if you were to go into, I believe it's under view here, simulation, and change the gravity to basically make this tiny sun have the same amount of gravity as the original sun, you can totally do this very easily. This is this means that we need to have 4,501 uh, more times more gravity than before. And this is really how I could solve my uh, little dilemma. So now we're going to go into the rings here and change this number to 74. We're placing 74 bodies and we're automatically um, calculating their mass based on the mass of the parent, which is why we changed the mass of the sun to 74. And now we just need to worry about the distances. And this is actually relatively easy. You're basically placing every single um, new ring in between the previous rings and so you're just adding up the distances dividing by two now for the first oh also we need to make sure the spacing is order uh for the first uh, ring i believe the distance is like 1.035 astronomical units and so we're gonna change this to that oops wrong wrong number uh here we go and this will the game will change it to 1.04, but I think it still stays as 1.035, at least the last time it did. And we're going to add ring number one. Okay, hopefully it did it. I'm not going to check just yet. I'm going to go and place my other five rings. And the distances here are 1.13. And I'm actually just reading this off my um, iPad because I did the calculations earlier. So 1.13, add another ring. And then we have 1.24, 1.24, uh, next one is 1.345, these are all very approximate, so uh, this is a very roughly sort of generated system, um, but it is accurate enough to last quite a long, long time. 1.46, 1.46. 1.46 and the last one is 1.585 and so this is 1.585 okay so I seem to have placed all of my planets in the right location let's now change the Sun back to one mass of the Sun uh, refreshing it as well and now we need to go back to the gravity thingamajiggy and change it back to one gravity per gravity. So here comes the big moment of truth. Let's see if this worked and if not, well, I'm going to come back and do this again in part two because I spent like two days making this video and I'm just really, really, really tired of making ultimate Earth systems with habitable zones and stuff. Anywho, so we need to actually enable the um, labels and trails, or at least orbits now, uh, because um, I want to see if, if it all worked. And we might want to actually zoom into like one of the locations here. So the frames per second now has suddenly decreased to like seven. That that is that that is how difficult it is for my computer to handle this right now. But we're gonna have to deal with it. So okay, let's run this and and. There's something in between them, and they're moving in the opposite directions! Yes, it worked! 
It, the magic has worked. Look at that. They're, okay, it's really hard to see because it's so slow. But they are totally moving in the opposite directions. I think if I remove the trails, maybe it will be easier to see. Ah, uh, the labels are not showing. Okay, that's not cool. Uh, hmm. What do, how, do I, how do I show you or how do I actually show it to myself that it's actually working? Uh, I think... Yeah, you can see that they're just basically flying past each other, right? Anyway, so uh, the orbits, the orbits for these guys are not showing for some reason. I think maybe just maybe I need to actually make it last a little bit longer for them to appear. But, oh no, they're slowly appearing. Okay, cool. Very cool. But the uh, trails are definitely, did I miss one? No, it's still there. Uh, the trails are definitely there, I think. So let's actually run this just a little bit. But basically, this right here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, aliens and other species, this right here is the biggest amount of Earth I could possibly conceive of placing in the same area. In basically the... Oh, what's going on with the lines here? Um, in the same area around uh, the habitable zone. And the number, if you did your, your math already... Um, is essentially uh, 74 times 6, this is a new uh, number, which is 444 planets, plus previous 517 planets, to get us a total of 961 Earth-like, earth that's not a plural, Earth-like objects, planets, in the uh, habitable zone around our Sun. Now, hypothetically speaking, mathematically speaking, and I guess uh, based on the papers I've posted in previous videos, this is going to be stable for about like a billion-ish years, and then slowly degrade and collide and turn into some other stuff. But uh, other than that, this is actually probably the best I'll ever be able to do it. So, I actually don't know why there's a gap right here between these two, because there is definitely planets there too. I see, I see them by pointing my mouse at them, but the ring is not showing. But anyway, so this is basically it. This is the ultimate engineered, ultimate uh, super habitable zone Earth simulation system. Now, whether we'll be able to ever make this, well, that's another story, because we don't even have enough masses present in our solar system, at least according to the recent calculations, because we don't really have this many Earth masses. Um, Saturn, for example, oh, not Saturn, sorry, Jupiter, for example, is 318 masses of Earth. Saturn is about 990-something, uh, uh, and that's not even close to this. this. This right here is way, way more Earth masses than we have in our solar system. So we just have to probably bring planets from other systems for this to actually happen. And also, it's ridiculously slow, slow right now. It's like four frames per second. But other than that, this is it. I'm very, very happy that I was finally able to do it. Took a lot, a lot of tries. And it's definitely something I'm kind of proud of right now. Because this is basically the most complex system I've ever created. Oh yeah, look at that. So if I show you the trails, you can see that there's actually 13 rings here. So the 13 orbits around the sun in the habitable zone. This, uh, the conservative habitable zone. We didn't actually consider this part, which is... Uh, so some scientists believe that you can also have liquid water in this area, uh, but we only focused on the conservative habitable zone, which is a little bit more um, certain to have liquid water. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it. Hopefully now you know how to create your own ultimate super mega system with maybe even a thousand Earths but it might not be as stable as mine. But this is definitely a huge burden on a computer, so I may need to not do this again until I buy like a super processor or something, or at least a new system. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And I may want to actually save this yet again, because this literally took forever to make. And then what we're going to do is... Let's actually, uh, let's see what happens if you then explode the sun inside the system. And uh, I'm going to do this by removing the labels and everything. And let's see what happens. Get ready, steady, and here we go.